What is up everyone? Jeremy here. Welcome to weekly what's new number 10 jumping straight into the topics. I am revealing my brand new logo. Uh, in fact, if you if you caught my most recent video where I announced the, the new series in the mix, you caught that new logo in the beginning and uh, at the end of the video. But here it is in all its glory. I actually put this together myself. I am not a professional graphic designer, but I, uh, I can dabble in Photoshop, you know, I, I can hold my own. So I put this together. I think it came out absolutely fantastic. Uh, I've got the, the animated intro now that you, this will be in, in all the all the videos going forward, um, you know, kind of self-branding, if you will. Moving on, um, I figured I'm getting a lot of questions and just general comments on certain things. On, on all my videos now that I've, you know, the, the channel's grown more. We're, we're inching up close to 400 subscribers. I think the last time I checked it was like 372. Um, so it, it's inching up there pretty quickly. So the channel is growing, which is awesome. Thank you all to everyone who subscribed. If you are watching and you've not subscribed, go ahead and hit the button down there below. I it mean the world to me. Um, but anyways, the channel's growing. I'm getting more comments on the videos. I'm getting more questions. So I figured every once in a while, I'm gonna go ahead and just stack up a bunch of these questions, queue them up, and I'll uh, I'll go ahead and respond to them in these weekly what's new videos. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of read through some of these questions and and or comments, and uh, just kind of add my thoughts. Or if, obviously, if it's a question, I'll go ahead and answer it here. So first up is um, on my Neural DSP Fort Nameless versus Overloud THU Slate Edition Randall T2 Boost video. User Unsal Ozara said, very good comparison. Both has killer tone. By the way, what drum sampler did you use? Um, in that video, it was the GGD P4, the Matt Halpern signature P4 kit. Um, so thank you for the uh, for the for the the compliments on the video and compliments on the tone. And it was the P4 kit. So moving on to the next question. Uh, this was on the Fortin Nameless Gent Tone uh, Tone Sample Series Episode 1. This was actually the very first video that I actually kind of started this channel with. The one, the, the one right before that was actually just me playing guitar, um, just kind of messing around with some of the Fortin Nameless Tones. And I figured, let me go ahead and show people how I put together this tone. And, and this was the one that kind of started it. Um, but we have user Teabagging Tiger uh, it says, extremely helpful are you going to make a drum video soon and i rep i replied in the channel yes i have plans on doing a drum video and uh I, I that was quite a while ago and i recently within like the last month or so uh released that video so quite a big delay there <laughs> apologies for that but the video is out um, it's up on the channel. If I remember, I'll put a link up here in the corner so anyone watching can go check that out directly. All right, so the next question comes from user Achilles who asks, Miko or Zilla is more realistic? And this was on my video where I was demoing the Omega Ampworks Granifier with the ML Sound Lab Miko on the left channel and GDD Zilla Cabs on the right channel. So to answer the user's question, I can't answer one being more realistic than the other because they both sound very realistic, very, just they're both incredible. Very, very good uh, impulse responses. Um, so I guess the, the best answer I could say is they, they both have uh, different tonal uh, uh, you know, characteristics to them. So use them accordingly, you know, right? Like, so in, in this video, the vi that video I, I, I was referencing here, that was just showing how you could actually blend them to create unique tones or even add to your, uh, you know, the width or the depth of your of your um, of your track or your song just by adding different impulse responses left and right channel. So hopefully that answers that one. All right, moving on. User Geisterfaust asks which one you prefer, and this was on my video. Just as like a, I put this video go, <laughs> this video together really quickly. It's a it's, it's a rather short video, but it's on uh, the, a comparison between my Schecter Hellraiser C7 and my Solar A1.7D, and uh, I had recently just gotten the Solar back from the shop because it had to have uh, the switch replaced, and uh, I, I was kind of like just threw together a quick video, 
playing through the STL Tone Hub. And, uh, and honestly, this is this turned out to be one of my most popular videos. It's got like 3,500 views or something now, um, and it's just growing rapidly. So uh, anyways, which one do I prefer, the user asks. I don't know as if I could answer that directly because again, just like the last one with the Miko or Zilla, um, they both sound really good. They both have certain um, tonal characteristics to them that make them useful for different types of, of tracks or songs or whatever it may be or applications. So um, I think m more recently I've been doing a lot more with the Solar, um, but I I I'll break out that Schecter any day and, and, and jam on that as well. I, I love them both. Moving on, we have user Brian Butler who is asking, would this be similar with neural cabs? And he's referring to um, my video, the mix and match guitar plugins for amazing custom tones. And in that video, I'm just simply showing how you can stack in, and this is this is required, you, you need to do this in a, in a DAW so you can actually like stack the, the plugins together in one track. And what you do is say for, for this example, what I did is I had um, the, the Fort and Cali uh, at the top of the, the first plugin. Underneath that, I had uh, the Omega Ampworks Granifier, and then underneath that, I had the Neural DSP uh, archetype Abbasi. And in the, in the Fort and Cali suite, all I had on was the pedal section so I could use the Fort and Zool and grind. Going into the Omega with the plumes pedal turned off, and then the only thing on there was the amp and then uh, the amp and the, and the IRs. And then going into the Abbasi, everything was off in the Abbasi except for the post effects. And so just showing how you can stack different amp sims to create completely custom tones. And so he's asking, is this is the same true for neural cabs? So could you use just as an example, um, say like S uh, STL amp hub, right? With just one of the amps or one of the ML sound lab um, uh, amp, uh, amp sims, right? Like put it as a first plugin, then after that, could you use one of the neural DSP uh, plugins after it just to use the impulse response section with everything else turned off? And the answer is yes, you can obviously do that. Moving on, we have user Benjamin Wade, who says, this is great advice. Everywhere, uh, everywhere else tells me to create an aggregate. I am using GarageBand and I was unable to get both tracks of audio to show in OBS because I was only able to monitor one track at a time. Do I need logic to be able to do this? Thanks. Um, this is on the most popular video I have, and this is uh, the specifically how to set up OBS on a Mac to capture like everything, like capture your voice, your guitar, your DAW, uh, your camera, your screen, everything all at once. Um, and so he's asking here, do I need logic to be able to do this basically? Um, and my answer in, in the channel there was no, you don't have to have logic. Really, it should work with anything. Um, and if anyone else watching this is interested in knowing how to set up a Mac to do all of this, to capture all of this, go check out that video because it, it works. And this is what you're, you're seeing me do it right now and, and it works. Next up is user David Suzuki who's asking, uh, well, it says awesome playing and tone. What audio interface monitors PC are you using? Uh, so to answer the question, what interface am I using? I'm using a Focusrite Scarlet 8i6, I believe is what it is. I think it's the third gen. Uh, what monitors am I using? I'm using, well, at the time he asked this, I was using some really old piece of crap M Audio monitors. Right now I'm using uh, some JBL uh, eight inch something or other. I don't know exa the exact model. I'll have to look it up. Uh, maybe I'll put it in the description. Uh, PC, I'm not using a PC, I'm using a Mac technically, but it's a, uh, a 2013 uh, Mac Pro is what I do most of my tracking and everything on. So that is my answer there. Moving on, we have user Darth Beard, who is asking, what's your buffer size looking like? Um, most of the time I met, God, I don't even remember now. It's like, what is it, 128 or 256? Kind of, I'm going back and forth between those. I think that I think those are the right numbers. Um, usually kind of at 128, sometimes I have to bump it up to 256. But um, yeah, that's, uh, that's my answer there. Anyways, moving on, we have Steve Aume. Question is, ever come across a video that literally, so well, I guess this is a comment, uh, ever come across a video that literally solves the exact question you've had? 
this is that video. Thank you so much, Jeremy. I'll be using this for my next videos. Well, thank you for the the incredible kind words there. And, and again, this is on the video, how to set up OBS on a Mac to capture all the things like I mentioned before. Um, so I appreciate the kind words. Thank you so much. User David Suzuki is asking, what's your top three amp sims out? And again, this was on my uh, ML Sound Lab super duper video. So this question was asked seven months ago. I honestly don't even remember what I put in the actual comment of the video. But if I were to answer this right now, it would be Omega Ampworks Granifier, Fortin Cali Suite, followed by the 5153 in the STL Amp Hub. Um, and I don't know as if I would necessarily put it in that order, like, you know, number one to number two to number three. Those are just my top three favorites, and I am constantly switching between them um, when I'm tracking. Sometimes I'm feeling the Cali, sometimes I'm feeling the 5153, sometimes I'm feeling the Omega, but those three I'm, are in constant rotation with, uh, for me. All right, next up is user Micah Miller, who says, dude, this is incredible, crisp video, awesome composition, and great production. The guitars in particular sound amazing. What did you use the uh, use on the rhythm guitars? First of all, Micah, thank you so much for the kind words uh, on the, the video and the composition and production and everything. Uh, I really appreciate that. Second, to answer your question, um, it was the Omega Ampworks Granifier, as I just mentioned, one of my favorites. Uh, the Omega Ampworks Granifier um, with the Fort and Cali suite in front of the Omega Ampworks Granifier um, with just the pedal section on so that I could use the Zool and the grind. So the, the grind was really pushing into the, the Omega Ampworks Granifier. The plumes pedal was turned off in the Granifier. Um, I had the IR section turned off. Honestly, the only thing that was on in the Omega um, was the, the amp. And then that went into the GGD Zilla Cab IRs, and that was essentially it. That was the tone, that's why I put it together. All right, next up, user Quispy Queem. Hey Jeremy, new to your channel, but the Amp Hub looks very amazing. Would you recommend it to a casual player that is in a college dorm? I am trying to save space. Great video, keep it up. First of all, again, thank you for the kind words. I really appreciate that. Um, and this is on my STL Amp Hub tone sample and demo video. Um, the answer is yes, uh, without a doubt. Amp Hub is incredible. Um, it, 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 they're updating it every month with new pedals, new amps, new impulse responses. Yeah, absolutely a, the way to go. Uh, you know, if you're in a small dorm and you want this ever expanding um, plugin, which is going to continuously grow and provide you with new tonal possibilities. So big yes to that. Next up, we have Manuel Vasquez, uh, who's asking, what mic are you using? Uh, and this was on my uh, the ML Sound Lab Super Duper video. And the mic that I'm using, I'm actually still using right now. Um, and this is an AKG Perception 100. It is a very, very old, very inexpensive mic. Um, I have this running through my Focusrite Scarlett Audio interface and going into another very old piece of equipment and Elisa's 3130, I think is what it is. Um, another very old, inexpensive compressor expander gate. Um, and I've got this really cranked up just to kind of really kind of crush my voice and, and level things out. Uh, and then from there, I do some additional post-production work on, on my vocals for these videos as well, um, which is to add some EQ, which uh, I add a low pass and a high pass and then boost a little bit of the upper mids and highs just to add some clarity. And then I have to pull out some around, I don't know, it's like maybe 300, 200 hertz, something like that. I kind of notch it out because in this room, it's kind of an echoing frequency. Um, but that's essentially how I edit my voice uh, for these videos. I, I'm assuming you want to know what mic I'm using because it sounds good, so thank you. Moving on, we have Tomas Zentai who says, wow, how can I learn to create mixes like this? My mixes sound always crap, but this is quality. 
Thank you so much for the kind words. I Again, I really appreciate that. Um, and this is on my STL Amp Hub. Oh, this is weekly what's new, number two. So in this video was STL Amp Hub. I was talking about preset swap, mixing drums, and then uh, OD guitars. And there was a uh, P, uh, some stuff I, I played in the beginning that I had put together, and I've, I'm assuming that's what this user was referring to, that mix that I put together. Uh, to answer your question, how can you create mixes like this? Uh, practice. That's the best answer I can give you. Research, um, study different techniques on mixing and, and, and just mixing, right? What, what different tools and techniques that you can use and just practice, 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 and listen to your mixes in as many different places as you can. And don't forget to listen to it in mono as well. Um, those are just some of the tips that I have. And so I, I you know, I, all the best to you. I hope that helps. And moving on, we have user Glenn uh, says, can you help me with I show you plugin? And this is on the, again, the, the setting up OBS on Mac video. Um, I am sorry, Glenn Ooft, I do not know anything about I show you. Um, maybe somebody watching this video or who sees your, your comment on that video can chime in and help but I cannot, I don't know anything about it. I'm sorry. All right, next up is from Bogren Digital, commenting, nicely done, thanks for a killer video, Jeremy. And this was on my Bogren Digital Rhythm IR Pack video, demoing the, 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 that IR Pack. So Bogren, G Jens Bogren, Bogren Digital, thank you all so much for noticing and, and leaving these super kind words. I, I really appreciate that, thank you. Next up is user Cacao B. The tone is killer. This one and the Aries videos are my current tone target. Have nameless DSP for my eight string Hellraiser, but impossible to get the same tone as you. Any tips? And also is the Ultra DI Pro helping to get this clean tone? Uh, and this was on, again, the same video, the Bogren, Digi Bogren Digital Rhythm IR pack. Um, again, thank you for the kind words on the killer tone, uh, to answer your question. Um, and since you mentioned your eight string Hellraiser, I would say go check out, um, I'll, and in fact, I'll put a link up here in the corner for, for this user or anyone else watching who is struggling to get a good, clean, crisp chunky tone without things getting really muddy or just really disgusting and it doesn't sound super tight and clean um, go check out that video it describes multiple techniques that i use to really tighten up a tone and just get a really thick tight chunky distorted tone so go check that out but really quick the 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 the, the, the most important things that i can mention are Use a good boost pedal, something like a like a Fort and Grind or a 33 that that really drops the low end and boosts the upper mids and highs, um, and and helps push the amp more. Turn down the gain. I'm going to say it again. Turn the gain down on your amp. If you have it up, I would say up above like maybe one o'clock ish. You know, up above that is it's going to be just mud and and disgusting. Turn it down, don't go above noon, turn it down to maybe even like 10 o'clock or hell, do what I've done in the past, turn it all the way off and then slowly bring it up until you've got just enough saturation that it starts to make the sound chunky but doesn't get overly saturated. Um, that's the best advice that I can have, or that I can offer, rather. All right, next up we have the Zen Metalhead who says, nice try, maybe the lovely t-shirt doesn't help your level of mentality and your being which make your playing weak. I'll do a live performance guitar playthrough video tomorrow and show you how it's supposed to be done. My Fear Factory tribute band will be doing live streaming concert in 2021. This is gonna be epic, but seriously, don't wear this t-shirt anymore. You mean this one? Ah, much better, yeah. I love this, I love this shirt. Anyways, we're gonna move on to the next question. We have Higor Rosado, who says, great video, would a dynamic compressor work as well? Thanks. Thank you for the kind words, Higor. And this is on my, in the mix, my uh, creating space for kick and bass video. And the answer is yes. Any Anything that would allow you 
to to bring back the level of a signal that that allows us uh, for for configuring a side chain would absolutely work for for uh, the concept of what I'm showing in this video, which is um, bring you know, bringing back the the sub bass. Uh, the, the frequencies of, of your bass, the lower sub bass frequencies, so that your kick and bass don't clash in those low, low sub frequencies. So yes, you absolutely could use a dynamic or multi-band compressor. All right, everyone, that is it for the questions and comments in this video. And that is the last topic as well. We're gonna wrap this one up right here. If you have any questions or comments or general feedback, please drop those in the comment section down below. I'll be collecting those for a future weekly What's New so I can respond to them in a future video. And if you're watching this and are not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. That subscribe button is right down below. It'd mean the world to have you join this channel. Uh, hit like and share. And as always, thank you for watching and thank you for your support.